Thelma opens with two characters, a father and his young daughter, walking across a frozen lake in a snow-covered landscape. Soon they come across a deer. The father looks down the hunting rifle and aims down the sight. Cut to a white shot and we realize that he's not aiming at the animal, but actually at the head of his young daughter, who is oblivious to what's going on because she's transfixed by the beauty of the deer. He hesitates. He can't bring himself to pull the trigger and he puts the gun down. That is a stunning opening sequence. A masterclass in how you tell a story visually, distilling information without any dialogue, but also leaving a certain amount of mystery for the spectator to want to know more about what's going on. Unfortunately though, that is by far the best sequence in the entire movie, and there is not one moment during the rest of the film that even comes close to matching the intensity of those opening two minutes. Joachim Trier is a Norwegian filmmaker who made a name for himself a couple of years back with his film Oslo 31st of August. I haven't seen Oslo 31st of August, as a matter of fact, this is the first film of his I've seen. And Thelma is a sort of mix between a prestigious film festival drama, a supernatural, almost superhero origin movie, and also a horror film. So Thelma is a studious, quiet, not very social young woman who comes from a very uh, Christian family uh, from the countryside and she moves to Oslo to uh, go to college and study biology. And this is the point where she starts to have seizures. Now those seizures are um, manifestations of two things basically. The first is that she has supernatural powers. Uh, we sort of get this very early on because uh, her first seizure that takes place in the library of the college that she's at, um, when that happens, birds start flocking uh, towards the building and start crashing into the windows and killing themselves. But her seizures also happen to be a symbol for her repressed sexual desire. The seizures always seem to happen when she's thinking about or surrounded by a, another young woman whom she is seemingly very attracted to. And obviously she is very much wrestling with those feelings because coming from a very strict Christian background, uh, that uh, seems to be not very much in line with her education. And so as the movie goes on, she tries to understand uh, her illness and also how to cope with the feelings that, that she has for this person. And that right there is essentially the movie. It's like the most slowly paced, most European uh, X-Men Origins movie ever made. But it actually made me appreciate those kind of films, uh, the good ones at least, uh, a, a lot more because I felt that by meddling all these genres, uh, the film ended up being not really a great drama, not a good superhero movie, not a good uh, horror film. It, it wanted to be a lot of things. But ultimately, it just wasn't much at all. And this is something I do, unfortunately, when I see a film that I'm not really into, is I start finding a bunch of films that I think are similar, and I start comparing it unfavorably. The first film that really came to my mind was Let the Right One In. Uh, one, because I'm racist, and I equate all Norwegians and Swedes. They're essentially the same thing, obviously. Uh, but it was more for the... Uh, um, appearance of a supernatural and horror within a world that's seemingly realistic uh, and also because there's just so many shots in the film that are in public pools uh, in those two films and you know they're right to do so. We all know since Cat People that uh, pools are imminently cinematic. The second film I thought about a lot during Thelma and is probably a better comparison is The Witch by Robert Eggers. Um, we don't know a lot about what's going on with Thelma. The movie's not very keen on giving us a lot of information. Uh, but at one point, she does start to do some research on these non-epileptic seizures that she's having. And throughout history, these have been recorded. And usually, they were associated with people being possessed by the devil and uh, resulted in a lot of people being burned for witchcraft. So there's the witch comparison obviously, but also in the way the movie ends, uh, in the family dynamic, and in this very Christian patriarchal figure uh, represented by the father of Thelma, uh, I just couldn't stop thinking that 
the film was heavily inspired by The Witch and that the director really loved that film. The thing about The Witch is that it is incredibly intense from moment one and that intensity, even though it's very slowly paced, sort of ratchets up into a really bonkers finale. And there's nothing close to that intensity in this film apart from those opening five minutes. And unfortunately, everything in Thelma for me really fell flat. There was a real distance between me and what was happening on screen and the film never really managed uh, to bridge that at all. The world, the characters, and even the story structure uh, with several flashbacks to her childhood so you get a better understanding of what happened when she was a kid and her relationship with her parents, all that felt extremely artificial. I'm not naturally the biggest lover of these very cold, sparse, um, Nordic, for lack of a better word, films. I tend to gravitate more towards very uh, Baroque, insane, overstuffed films, films that have too many things rather than not enough. And I guess that's maybe a cultural issue because I'm from Southern Europe and right there you've got like a divide between uh, Scandinavian Protestantism and Mediterranean Catholicism. But that doesn't mean I can't love an order film, right? I love Victor Sjöström's film. Uh, I love Ingmar Bergman, obviously. Uh, and, you, you know, many others. It just means that those kind of films have to really work to pull me in uh, because I'm not naturally inclined to do so, and in this case, it really didn't. And again, I'm saying the word unfortunately a lot because I really wanted to like this film more than I did uh, because you can really tell that the director is really good. Um, there are just several sequences that are uh, very well put together. In, from a technical standpoint and from a visual standpoint, I, I just feel that I was totally unengaged with the majority of this film. And I really would like to see his other works uh, to get a better understanding of him as a filmmaker and maybe genres in which he is uh, more suited to. As always, thanks for watching this video. And if you wouldn't mind liking and hitting that subscribe button, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, thanks. Show